without further ado, uh, this gentleman knows more about uh, these developments, and they're very interesting. You're going to want to hear about this. Let me bring up uh, the director of the San Francisco Tesla Society, Mr. George North. Uh, excuse me, George Gabor. George Gabor. Very close. Sorry about that. And a very interesting developments. George, take it away. We're here to celebrate solutions tonight. And I have an announcement along those lines. Um, Throughout history, significant inventors have provided necessary technological reform needed for our very survival. Unless the masters of threatened parasitic institutions succeed in suppressing the new technology and the inventors, mankind's destiny has already been set back hundreds of years by the ruthless persecution and suppression of great inventors like Nikola Tesla and his wireless power, Royal Life and his electronic treatment of cancer. Um, Philo T. Farnsworth, his electronic fusion, many of you have probably never heard of that, and many, many, many more. Uh, now, we concluded some time ago that the one thing that most of these inventors never had was a grassroots public movement to support them and defend them. And so we thought, well, why don't we do that? So for the past three years, many of you have come by our booth and you've seen me pestering people about the plight of inventor Paul Pantone. Now, Paul Pantone, for 30 years, over 30 years, he's been developing a technology called GEEP, which stands for Global Environmental Energy Technology, and it, did, it uh, doubles or triples your gas mileage as it reduces pollution, pollutants like hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, etc., by over 90%. Um, in the year 2000, he refused to sell out on his patents. Uh, he was framed uh, by vulture investors for securities fraud in Utah. In the year 2005, he was railroaded into the Utah State Mental Hospital uh, for an indefinite period, which looked like it was going to be the rest of his life. While he was there, he acquired hepatitis C, which was left untreated for over three years. He had a broken foot. The list goes on and on and on. But basically, throughout all that time, they were trying to break him physically, emotionally, and through caregiver neglect and medical abuse um, to get him to give up his patents, um, take forced psychotropic medicine, which he never agreed to, and we, we fought successfully in the courts. And, uh, and just uh, to give up his patents and give up his life and give up his future, and he never gave in. The remarkable thing is that Paul Pantone conducted much of his legal defense from inside the walls of the Utah State Hospital without access to law books and mostly from memory of law training he had received himself in his own life behind that. And we worked with him closely. There were over 100 people on the team uh, throughout the world who worked with him. And many people in this room have come by our booth and have helped and written letters of encouragement. I want you all to all know it really made a difference. So what it comes down to is on May 12, 2009, the state of Utah finally gave up and released Paul Pantone. Now becomes the great work of creating a sanctuary for inventors throughout the world where they can be protected, they can be funded, they, can, uh, they will be respected, and they will be treated ethically by individuals and corporations um, and, uh, and uh, protected by the grassroots. I would like to now introduce to you Paul Pantone. Paul, will you say if he's here by cell phone, he's just gonna say a few words to you. Paul? Thank you, George, and everyone else who helped me. I sincerely appreciate it. Now, we're going to get this out to mankind as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you, Paul. God bless you.